data here so what I'm going to go over today is how to do the dial send estimator in RR studio so the first thing you do have to do is download the R programming language and then you have to download the R studio IDE interactive development environment and here I've downloaded the packages needed to put everything into a nice R markdown where I code in between the back ticks the R right here says I'm using the R programming language here I download the tidyverse package and I also for this video am downloading uh, a package called MBLM in order to do the thylacin estimator. So if you're going to create a linear regression you use the LM function from base R. In this example I'm using the empty cars data set, miles per gallon as a function of weight and then I can use the coefficient to find this intercept and the slope. And I can do the same for the thylacin, except instead of LM, I'm using MBLM uh, to get the thylacin estimator. So that gives me another way of coming up with a line of best fit. The slope and the intercept are similar, but not exactly the same. What the thylacin is doing is you create a line between every single pair of points, and then you find the median slope and intercept, and that's your line of best fit and it's a non-parametric technique you don't know how to find that line except by creating the slopes and intercepts and finding the median and iterating through it in that way uh, and it has an advantage because it's robust against outliers um, so here what i'm doing is i'm going to graph the empty cars data set with a thousand estimator i use the geom ab line geometry as a layer i specify um, the slope and the intercept, intercept equals 37, slope equals negative 5, and there's my line of best fit. Now for the rest of the video, I'm going to come up with a different way of coming up with a thylacin estimator so you can see some of the math behind it and build the intuition. So first thing first, I have the empty cars data frame. Here it is. I, it doesn't have a column for the car name, so I'm going to use as tibble road names equals car, and then I'm just going to select weight and miles per gallon because those are the variables I care about. And then in this next data, in this next section, what I'm going to do is hit expand.grid and that multiplies car by car two, comes up with every permutation, 32 times 32, gives me 1,024 combinations. That's too many, but I'll come back to that. And uh, this first thing that I did created was the empty cars data frame. It just has the, um, <coughs> car weight and miles per gallon. So here what I'm going to do is left join to come up with weight and miles per gallon. Then I'm going to rename that first data frame car 2 so I can come up with a weight and miles per gallon for the second car. So here's the weight for the first car, mile per gallon for the first car, weight for the second car, mile per gallon for the second car. Now if I'm going to create a math equation in our markdown I can use these two dollar symbols y equals mx plus b is the slope intercept form of a line. It's how I find the slope. And B equals Y minus MX. I just subtract MX from both sides. That's how I find the intercept. So that's what I'm doing here. Slope equals Y and uh, miles per gallon of one minus the other divided by <coughs> the difference between the two weights. And the intercept, I use that same equation to find the slope and the intercept. Let's run that line of code. You see that I see NAN, where the Mazda is being compared to Mazda, so it's a line through its own point. That's, of course, um, indeterminate or undefined. So what I'm going to do is get rid of those, <clears throat> end up with 992. Is that the correct number, though? It's not. How do I know? I use the combination form formula, N choose K. What I do is N factorial divided by K factorial multiplied by the difference n minus k factorial. So in our code, I actually just write out factorial. This gives me 496. So I obviously have these lines doubled up. What I can do is use the pmin pmax functions in order to create a uh, column that's unique. Slice off the first one, ungroup it, and get rid of that column. And now I have a data set 496. Beautiful. Now find the median. If the median is from a data set that has an odd number of variables, I divide by 2. If it's an even number, I have to use the slightly more complicated formula, but really I'm just averaging the first two middle numbers. Um, here I could just specify median, empty cars intercept, median of the slope. And you can feed more than one data frame into ggplot. Here I go back to my original empty cars 
weight on the x-axis, miles per gallon on the y-axis, and then I do geom AB line, I use my new data frame, aesthetic mapping, I can call the intercept and slope for every single one, run that line of code, and it looks like, uh, I mean, it's a mess, it looks like a spider web, but here, at least you can see uh, every, uh, the line going through every pair of points, and, um, you know, I put the blue line, which is a thousand right on top of that, which is the median of all these slopes.